Hey there, fanboys and fangirls. This is Phil, a.k.a. Ryden. And I'm Mike, a.k.a. Lord Skywalker. And if you're joining us from our recent video on the Switch details, thanks for switching over. Oh, my God. Uh, all uh, Switch puns aside, it's time to get down to the nitty-gritty, what we actually think about all of this stuff. So I guess we'll, we'll just go in the same order. Talking about the yeah. console itself in general. So, color-wise... I'm probably just going to stick to the standard gray. I don't really see the point in having the different colors. Yeah, like, no, I mean, if I could get it all in one distinct color, like if it could be all blue or all red, like, that'd be cool. I mean, I'm, I'm probably just going to skin it anyway. Yeah, that's a fair um, point. I mean, that's what I've done with my Xbox controller with the Final Fantasy skin. I'm yeah. Do, customize. Don't be sheep. Just do what you want with your system. <laughs> And, yeah, like Leia said, like, it's not really gray. I don't know why they're calling it gray, unless you want to count it as, like, charcoal gray. It, it's black. It's, it's black. Well, you know, being an artist, you should know color theory. I mean, uh, it, when it comes to plastic, it does not really matter. It's black. Yeah, you're right. Mm. You're right. So, as far as, like, modular design goes, like, it's popping up all over the place like we had the especially in like cell phones like we had the LG the G5 where you could take the whole Thanks innards hard. out to change the battery up that um, uh, modular design is kind of the way of the future when it comes to everything in general furniture's done it technology's now doing it um, Microsoft has even hinted that their next system won't even won't be the last in so many terms because of modular It'll be the last thing they come out with, but they'll constantly iterate and update it. And I think that's kind of what the gaming industry needs. Instead of updating an entire console, why not just do one part? My, that's how PC gaming works. My only thing with modular stuff, it depends on the original build quality and the material. Because, like... For this, like, a majority of the Switch is plastic. The more you pop it in and out, it's going to wear the hell out. And eventually, it's just not going to work anymore. And you're going to have to pay that, what, seventy nine ninety nine to get new jo new joy pad, joy, whatever, Joy-Con? Joy-Con. Joy-Con, that's so stupid. It sounds like a really bad convention for people that are too happy all the time. Yeah, it does. But yeah, eventually you're gonna have to shell out the eighty bucks, hopefully less by that point. Well, to, that's to replace also pieces. that's also assuming that it's just <clears throat> the controller that's messed up, not the actual port on the switch itself. Yeah, which again, the constant moving it in and out could tear that up just as easy as it could the controllers. Yeah, and uh, and that that was the whole reason that I didn't pick the G5. I picked the the Galaxy instead, because like yeah, it's a cool concept, but I knew that the more I kept taking that piece off, the less it's effective it's going to be in the future. Now, it's different for, like, PCs and hardware, hardware kind of stuff, because most of it's metal or a hard, really hard plastic that's made to swap out. That yeah. being said, we haven't actually handled the Switch. We don't really know how flimsy or how yeah. hard it is. That's true. So it could very well be what we need it to be. We'll see. Which... Random side note, I, I did see this awesome video where this guy took his Xbox One S apart and basically turned it into a gaming laptop without a keyboard. So he could, it was portable, he could just carry it around, plug it in, and just play, whatever. It was really awesome. I want, I want to say that might have been the Ben Head show, because I'm pretty sure he does a lot of stuff like that. It might have been. Um, so, okay, so the cost... Three nine uh two ninety nine. I don't know why I was about to Ooh. say Yeah, three ninety nine would have been a definite no. Pricey. Uh two ninety nine I mean it sounds right. I would have liked it to have matched the rumored price of two forty nine, but I know why it's two ninety nine. If you look at the NVIDIA Shield that came out what a year or two ago. Yeah. That was priced around the one ninety nine mark. And it offers pretty much the same general concept and specs as the Switch. And so, considering all the extra peripherals and their price range for that, 
the two ninety nine makes sense within that general model. Yeah, I I get the peripheral side of it. The it just it doesn't click in my head immediately, just because like I see the switch and I'm immediately like two ninety nine. Well, I can all like at best I get ten eighty p, but how many people are you like most people are going to carry it around they're going to use it as a portable system you're only going to be getting that 720 all the time i'm i'm largely concerned about the power of the system yeah. because of that um nintendo classically since i think the last time they actually had a console that was more powerful was the gamecube versus the ps2 yeah and then you know the xbox came in and completely just <laughs> crushed both but then when once you had the Wii with the PS3 and the Xbox 360, it was by far the weakest. Oh, yeah. Like, the Wii was no contest. It, it was basically just a GameCube with slightly enhanced graphics and a... And Wii remotes. And, yeah, a BS controller that really didn't mm-hmm. work the way it should have or the way anybody expected it to. And then you get the Wii U versus PS4 and Xbox One, and it's the same deal, which it's is why... Yeah. Nintendo is releasing a second console within one generation. Yeah. I'm um, I'm hoping that we've kind of seen the end of the Wii. I don't foresee them making another one just because I'm, I'm pretty sure they they've even killed off the actual development of Wii and and yeah, products Yeah, for the it. original Wii no it's it's ceased. It's same with like 360 and yeah, like because there's very few it's just, things that are still produced for it. It was a flop. Oh yeah. I mean the it, Wii the Wii was successful only in and of the fact that it sold a ton. Because everybody wanted it's it, everybody it was got a gimmick. it. Exactly, the gimmick sold it, but as a console with games, I personally think it failed. Well, yeah, like, and that and that's another big worry that I have with the Switch is the lineup, because. Launch lineup is six confirmed it's, games. It's spark. It's and it's nothing that piques my interest too much. It's nothing that I'm just looking at and I'm like, oh man, I have to play that other than Legend of Zelda. You see, Nintendo they did some really good things with the Wii U as far as trying to get certain exclusives. Yeah. Bayonetta was probably the only really good case of it, but they managed to get exclusive rights to a game that had appeared on other consoles. Yeah. Um, they actually passed up. Uh, found this out recently that Gearbox, the developers behind the Borderlands series, were actually in talks to release a game on the Switch, or to even go back and re-release the old Borderlands games on it. Hmm. Talks of that fell through, so now they won't be hitting the Switch. Hmm. And apparently that comes down to the fact that Nintendo just stopped talking to them. They just they focused on something else and hmm. negotiations stopped on it. Yeah, I think as far as worries go, that the more I think about it, the more I realize that is probably my biggest worry, is the fact that, like, I own a Wii U. And I got it only a couple weeks after it came out. And I only have about four games for it. Because, A, they don't release a ton of games that interest me. There's, I mean, there's the few. There's Mario Kart. There's Mario Party. There's, Smash there's Brothers. things like that, the the staples that you're used to. The problem but is there's so few far and yeah, there's few. They're few and far between, and sometimes when they do come out, they're not good. Yeah, like Mario Party at ten was, it was okay, but it was not nearly as good as some of the old Mario Parties. And like, you have to go back about seven generations on Mario Party for it to get good again. <laughs> And that's the thing is like, I paid probably around two ninety nine for this Wii U because it came with Mario Kart, and I've I very sparingly play it, and I only picked up like four games for it because there's just there's there I'm realizing that Nintendo doesn't offer nearly as much as I am interested in anymore. The biggest issue <clears throat> with it is Nintendo doesn't know how to handle their own IPs, and they're. They also focus too much on a party system. Yeah. Without fleshing it out. They want it to where, hey, Mario Party was a game for multiple people. It's not something you're going to play by yourself unless you're sad and lonely. <laughs> Which, I mean, okay, admittedly, that's probably most of their fan base. Oh. But still. Shots fired. 
Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in that fan base too. If I had a Wii U, I'd probably play it by myself because I'm desperate for attention. I'm not going to lie, I played Mario, Mario Party by myself about four weeks ago. And Mario Kart, I mean, the only thing that really saves Mario Kart from being the same way is it at least features online play. Yeah, and that's something I'd like to see pop up more with Nintendo's games is, like, if you're going to keep throwing Mario at us, give us more online. It's interesting. Which, that is one of the things that they announced with the System 2, which we didn't cover in our other video, but Nintendo will be going to a paid online system. Oh, Jesus. Starting this fall. For the first few months, the online play is going to be free, but once they start their subscription service, you'll have to pay to play. Same way as with Microsoft yeah. and Sony. Which, admittedly, Sony's got a lot better once they started charging for it. Yeah. But because they were able to maintain their servers, they gave away free content. If Nintendo plays their cards right, it could be well worth it. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll concede that point. That being said, I know personally I don't want to have to pay for yet another online service. No, I really don't. I mean, that's that's the same. Like, that's the whole reason I only have Netflix. I don't have Hulu anymore because I got tired of paying for multiple. I picked the one I used more. That's why people share so much. Yeah. As far as the lineup goes, there just needs to be more. They've shown off a few decent looking games. They've shown off games that we've been waiting for a long time. <laughs> looking at you, Zelda. And I don't know. There's not enough there to grab my attention right now. Uh, let me let me just throw this out here. They're already fucking up. Because one of the big games that's going to release not long after this, the system is out is a re-release of Mario Kart already. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which literally gives you barely anything new. Why am I going to buy it when I get like one new track and like four characters? I'm sure there'll probably mm. be more they haven't really announced with it, but yeah, it does seem kind of pointless that their big release is a re-release. Yeah, like... Especially of a game that's, what, two, three years old at this point? Yeah, and I'm... I'm I'm counting it down. I'm calling it right now. I'm calling the shot. Sometime in the next few months, we're going to get this big advertisement for Mario Maker for the Switch. It's happening. I'm calling it right now. Honestly, I I'm still waiting for the Super Smash Brothers Deluxe announcement. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised that hasn't that's happened. That's coming, too. No doubt. Um, but where's Metroid? Where's Star Fox? Why are those series constantly being put on the back burner when they have their fan base? Yeah. Like, the games that were so old from those series are still better than most of the new stuff they put out. We get a new Mario or 20 every year, <laughs> and nothing really makes them worthwhile. I mean, right now we've got, what, Mario Grand Theft Auto coming out this year? <laughs> That's going to wear off the novelty 10 minutes in. Oh, yeah. It's going to be just too weird, I think. It's not... It's, it doesn't... Like, even watching the trailers, it doesn't feel right. It's a me, Mario, motherfuckers. <laughs> and that's about it. Nintendo loved them, loved them, loved them growing up. Oh, yeah. But they have severely lost my interest the last few years. Ever, ever since the Wii, they've gone downhill. I mean, I had a GameCube. I Actually, you know what? GameCube is where they lost me. There were very few good games for it. The good games that they did have were third-party, but they had so little third-party support. Yeah. Uh, Resident Evil 4 may have been the best game that was on the GameCube outside of Smash Brothers and Luigi's Mansion. But there's just so little to talk about from them. I mean, you have Twilight Princess as well, but eh. Yeah, they're just... I don't know. Nintendo, they're back and forth a lot for me. Like, there's weeks that I'm super pumped. I'm like, oh yeah, like this is really cool. I'm glad Nintendo's doing this. And then a couple weeks later, it's right back to Nintendo. Why? Why look, are you doing this? Look at their mm -hmm. IPs. You have Pokemon, which is this just behemoth force within gaming. Yeah. 
the moment you release something Pokemon, people are all over it. Whether it's the card game or Pokemon Go, it's millions and millions of dollars. Why have they not released an MMO? That is an excellent question. Why have they not released more, I don't know, 3D adventure games with Pokemon? Why not have something like Legend of Zelda style Pokemon adventure game? I mean, we, we've had games on the main consoles. We had Pokemon Stadium as far back as the N64. You've had um, Pokemon XD and Gale of whatever it was on GameCube. Yeah. But there's so much more they could do with it than just their Game Boy games. Yeah, like, I mean, we got, what, that Pokemon tournament or whatever. Which was okay. As yeah. a fighting game, it was solid enough. Yeah, like, I, I miss Pokemon Stadium, and I, I think it would be a good seller, but I don't foresee them making it anytime soon. I don't either, which is the problem. Maybe the Switch can be the thing where they're like, okay, we've got the hardware that people like. Maybe now we should focus on the games. Yeah. That's what I want out of the Switch. If the Switch cannot deliver me within the next two years a solid lineup of games, that's me putting in the towel for a Nintendo. Because <laughs> as is even my 3DS, that's almost entirely restricted now to RPGs. Yeah. Most of which I've, I've barely scratched because my lineup of games to play through is a little too long but they gotta do something well to end this I'm gonna go through and we're gonna take a look at some games coming out soon that we're a little excited for switch or non-switch both okay so if, if a switch pops up on on the list then why not uh, so January 24th Resident Evil 7 I am com I am completely interested in it. I will not play it myself. <laughs> I will watch somebody play it. Yeah, it it, it looks genuinely terrifying. Um, that that being said, if say you want to go at it together, we can like co-op it together or something. Just play next to each other. I'll do that, but I'm not playing it by myself. <laughs> uh, let alone in VR. Yeah, that. Oof. I, I uh, there's heart trouble in my family. I'm not pushing that. <laughs> So that'll be uh, PS4, PSVR, Xbox One, and PC. And you heard uh, it here, folks. I am that much of a coward. Shit my pants scared for that one. Yep. Uh, another interesting one that's caught my eye here recently, For Honor. I've been following that one since it was first announced. I'm really excited for it just because I love sword combat. I love just the idea of it. The controls, I've not played the game whatsoever. I know there was a demo or there's going to be a demo. Yeah. It's, it's one or the other. There either is one or there will be one. But just hearing people talk about the controls, it seems really odd. Yeah. So I, I just wonder how that's going to be. My, my, my thing is, like, if you've got For Honor, which is a game literally just about sword fighting, I'm going to need Disney to hop on that and make a Star Wars version of that. Giant Jedi lightsaber battles. Just just throwing that out there. I mean, we, we've got some of that. That was like uh, Jedi Academy back in like the 90s and early 2000s. Yeah, but I want a new one. I need I need more. That was not enough. I, I'm still waiting on the definitive Star Wars game. I mean, Force of, the Force Unleashed was good. Yeah. But they need to figure get some stuff out for it. They need to hire us. We'll come up with something. Uh, there's too many idea guys. They need people that can actually put it into action. We can do both. It's fine. So, but yeah, For Honor, PS4, Xbox One, PC. That's going to come out Valentine's Day. Oh, is it that soon? Valentine's Day oh, Massacre yeah. for everyone. Oh, there goes my wallet. So, uh, next up on the list we got on February 21st, Halo Wars 2. Ooh, bargain did, bin right there. I did not play Halo Wars. I played enough of Halo Wars to know that I liked it as an RTS. However, I suck at those games, and I won't pay full price for one. Gotcha. Uh, I'll stick to Age of Mythology and Age of Empires until Halo Wars 2 drops down to like 10 bucks. <laughs> That'll, of course, only be Xbox One and PC. As to be expected. Yeah. 
huge one on my list, which I do have pre-ordered. Horizon Zero Dawn. I have that pre-ordered too. Uh, actually, I pre-ordered that for you when you were at GameStop. Yes, you did. Uh, for the collector's edition, which with statue. Just because I'm a sucker for statues, I don't need them. I don't have anywhere to put them. But damn it, if I don't want it. It's a beautiful statue. It is. It's gonna go nice thing right next to that uh, Alderwing dragon from Skyrim from five years ago. I'm gonna steal that from you one day. <laughs> and I'm gonna beat you to death with it. Yeah. Worth it. Maybe. So. That is PS4 exclusive, and that'll be February 28th, 2017, as opposed to the 29th. Cannot release it on a leap year. So, next up we got uh, March 7th, 2017, coming to the PS4, Xbox One, PC, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. That is another one I am super excited for, just because it looks amazing. It does. Just in general, just the open aspect of it, being able to partner up with your friends to tackle missions however you want. It looks good. And it looks to be something that will redeem them after the ridiculous failure that was The Division. Yeah. I mean, The Division... The Division would have been the worst game of last year for me had it not been for No Man's Sky. That's how that's how I rate ooh, the division. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, you know what? No Man's Sky is that is best saved for another day. We'll make we'll make a, a podcast of strictly games that disappointed us, and I like Star Wars Battlefront and No Man's Sky are taking you know forefront. We'll there. make that announcement right now. Next podcast, <laughs> we're going to talk about the games that disappointed us in 2016. Ooh, that's that's gonna be a brutal one. And I'll, I'll round out the list here, uh, just so we're not getting too far ahead into the year, because too far ahead and there's still time for delays and misinformation, so we'll end it with this one, March 21st, 2017. Say it with me if you know what, you know, if it's coming out that day. Mass Effect Andromeda. They, well, since the release date for that is just so recently announced, yeah, I'm pretty well sure it's going to make it. I don't know of any other big hitters that EA has coming out around then. Yeah. So that kind of needs to hit. If they want to take something for that quarter. Which, I've, I've barely played any of the Mass Effect series. I've played maybe two hours of the first game. Um, so they are on my list to eventually go back to. Andromeda is going to be one that I am going to pick up and play. Because I've heard that you can do that without having to play the previous trilogy. Yeah, it's it's set. I, I think several. It's it's very far ahead in the yeah. future. So I'll be able to play that without worrying about the story, which is good. Because otherwise, I would never touch it. Yeah. Because I'm one of those guys. I like to play my stuff in order. I like to watch movies in order, TV shows yeah. in order, so I can get the whole story. Well, coming from someone who did play all three Mass Effects, and was severely let down by the third one. You and however Everyone many else. million people. <laughs> I'm I'm very interested to see how they uh how they make how they make it up to us for that. And hopefully Andromeda can do that. I guess we'll find out in two months. Yeah. Alright, I think we'll go ahead and we'll call it a day on that. Alright. This is Ryden signing off. This is Luke Skywalker signing off. We'll see you guys next time.